Hello everybody, I'm Nick and in this video I'm going to show you how you can create a microservice in .NET Core that doesn't have an interface. By doesn't have an interface, I mean that somebody cannot just call it using an API, for example. APIs are very common in the microservice world, in the enterprise world, but it's also very common to have something that isn't being accessed by some user or some other service. And we usually use those as console microservices in .NET Core. And I'm going to show you how you can create one. And examples of those can be something listening to a service bus for messages and then processing those and doing something with some data, or also listening for events in Event Hub and so on and so forth. So this is what I'm going to show you today. And this is how I would do it, but you can choose to do it on your own way. I'm going to be explaining exactly why I'm choosing to do it that way. And hopefully you'll find that helpful. Before I dive into the code, I want to remind you that I'm running a giveaway for five free one year Rider subscriptions. Rider is the ID that I am personally using in my videos. And since many of you have asked, I partnered with JetBrains to give you five free one year licenses for Rider. So in order to sign up for the giveaway, you have to click the link in the description and follow the instructions, which is to be subscribed and ring the sub notification bell on and also optionally comment and like on the video. This video is part of my .NET Core series, so if you don't want to miss any episodes, make sure you subscribe and ring the sub notification bell to get notifications when I upload a new episode. So let's just dive into the code now. As you can see, I have an empty solution. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to create, uh, instead of creating just a console application, which is probably what you would think this is, I, I will actually go and create a web application. And I'm going to name this just micro service.console. It doesn't really matter. And I'm going to choose this to be a web API and I'm going to explain exactly why I'm doing it. Do not show authentication. You don't want that. You see a web API donor core running in Kestrel is still a console application, but running a web host in it. And if I expand here, you can actually see exactly what's in here. We have controller, we have launch settings, and then some other options in the startup. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the launch settings and I'm essentially going to remove the IIS Express profile and then say don't launch the browser and remove all the browser related settings. We don't really need that. And now I will delete controllers and make sure there's nothing related here. And then I will also go to the startup.cs and I'm going to delete the add controllers and essentially everything in here because I want to keep the console application part of it. And I'm going to delete the weather forecast as well. And this is the bare minimum that I need now. Why, Nick, did you choose to use a web host, you're asking? Because this is actually a web builder. This will expose something on a specific port. Well, in realistic microservices, you will usually use a traffic manager to ensure that the microservice is still running and its performance is not degraded because you might need to restart it. There are many ways to restart things when they're running in a container environment. And this can also be driven by exit codes, but it is not uncommon to also want to collect metrics from those applications. And this is where Prometheus and other services like app metrics will come into play and need to access an endpoint in order to get those metrics. For that reason, our application can be primarily a console application, but we will need to expose most commonly a metrics and a health endpoint. And in fact, just to show you how this works, I'm going to go ahead and add this right now. I'm going to go and search for app metrics, the NuGet package. So it's app.metrics. And then if I search for ASP net core, and I will choose the health endpoint one, and I'm going to install it. So yes. And I need to do a couple of things. First in the web builder, I also need to say web builder dot use health endpoints. And I don't need to say anything here. And then also in the app, I need to say app dot use health endpoints or endpoint and also say services dot add health endpoints. Now for this to work with this specific package, I need to do a little bit of further tweaking, but you would normally not have to do this once they officially update it in the 4.0 version, but you have to say web builder dot use Kestrel and then specify that in the options options dot allow synchronous io equals to true now, you wouldn't normally need to do that again but if you're on dotnet core 3 this will throw an exception if you use this specific package and there might be another app metrics package that has this fixed already but the one i'm going to demonstrate with is that 
but this is package specific you wouldn't normally need to do it if you use any other health check or metrics collection package so if i run this application now and i go to my browser and i go to the localhost 5000 port and then health as you can see i'm getting the health check and i can also in my app metrics if i want add the metrics one i won't show that it's the same process this is not a video on app metrics even though there is a video in app metrics coming so if i stop this application now you get why this is a web host and not just a console application now let's go to the consumer side of things right because you will need to run something that gets data from somewhere and puts it somewhere else this is basically any microservice ever there's an entry point you get some data you get some information you process that and then you either send it somewhere else or you store it in a database so what i, I will create here is i'm going to create it's just a service bus consumer class and this class will be used as the long-running task that i will use to essentially run my microservice and in order to do that i will extend the background service class and if i implement the missing members you see that it only has a single method and that is the execute async method with a stop token now this is where you would put your microservice logic where you just consume something and put it somewhere else because i'm lazy and because i want to keep the video short I'm actually going to copy Microsoft's example for service bus and I'm going to demonstrate this using a service bus queue. So if I Google for service bus.net core example, I'm going to choose the first one, assuming that's the right one. And yes, all I'm going to do is I'm going to copy the consumer code, which can be found down here. So this is all I need. As you can see, you have three methods here. I'm going to copy those methods, paste them in this class. Of course, this could potentially not be the most optimized way to do that, but I just demonstrate how I would do it very quickly. And then I will have an IQ client, which I can potentially inject through dependency injection to show you how this works. So in order for that to work, of course, I need to add the NuGet package for Azure Service Bus. So they probably provide this in the page. If I go at the very top, it should be in the prerequisites. So yeah, here we go. That's the name of the package. I'm going to go ahead and just paste it here and then add it. And with the package added, I'm going to go ahead and import all the missing files here. As you can see, most of them go away. And now the only thing missing is the queue client, which I'm going to go ahead and add now. And I'm going to inject that from dependency injection. So private read only IQ client underscore Q client and inject that and i'm going to initialize this in di so what i'm going to do is i'm going to copy that go to startup and then add service i'm going to say services dot add singleton you don't really need more instances of this and then i'm going to just say new queue client and i'm going to copy the credentials for my system so i'm going to go to service bus shared access policies and then copy the url and the uh, key so we're going to copy the full connection string and go back here so the first thing is the connection string itself and then the entity in our case it's the name of the queue and if i go in the browser you're going to see that the queue down here is called main queue so i'm going to copy that name and i'm going to paste it at the end of that and now i initialize this in di as always you'll find the full code in the description down below so now that i have that here I can potentially just replace it and it will all work. And basically what this will do, it's start consuming messages that are coming in that queue. And I'm gonna simulate how that would work. Uh, the last bit I need is some code. Again, it should be around here where normally you'd have this in the main async method, yeah. So we don't need that, but what we do need is to copy the register on message async. So just copy that paste this here and then return task dot completed task so this is everything we need to start receiving messages i should also just remove the static from here because i don't really need it to be static so this is the bare minimum we need just using the sample and all we're really doing is we're registering to listen to a queue and then we have a process message async method which gets the message and then just prints its content and acknowledges it and says okay i completed processing this so how do you register this actually well it's very very simple you go to startup 
and underneath everything you just say services dot add hosted service and then you paste the name of the background service and that's it then the whole thing will just start automatically and using a web host actually allows you to do that so i can just run this now and i will go on the uh, service bus explorer utility that you can find the description down below as well it's an open source project and then if i copy the connection string which should be around here then i can just connect to that click on that and say okay and then i should be able to see my queue as you can see my main queue is visible now and i can start sending sending messages so i'll do right click send messages and i'm going to send a, a test message so hi is the property name and then the content is this and the format will be uh, json so i'm just going to just start sending that and i'm going to send a message and as you can see in my console the message is received meaning our application is working and the background service isn't disposed it's long running it's there i can just keep sending messages and you'll see that the sequence number is actually increased which means we process a new event every time and i can change this to whatever i want this could be john test or any other type of test it doesn't really matter as you can see it's here and then what you would do in a realistic scenario is you would get that string and you would pause it deserialize it as a poco object which makes sense for you to pause and this will be your contract incoming from the service bus and you would map it to a domain object and do anything you want with it i won't show a specific way like putting it in a database or anything in fact for you watching uh, and if you check the code in the description down below i will actually just show you how you could just pass it into an object and it could be as simple as object equals json convert deserialize object and then this is all you need to do and then you have the object obviously if this is a contract you can provide your t-type but again i don't need to show that here and if i put a breakpoint this should all work fine once i restart this so let me just quickly rerun it and push some messages so pushing one message allows me to create an object and you can say it's a j object now with the content of the message if you specify something different and it can be mapped it will be mapped and really that's all here's where you put your you know you, your inject your database and convert it and do some magic and send it somewhere but this is the bare minimum you need to start processing from something without an interface in this specific scenario azure service bus you can use anything that you like as long as it has some sort of listening capability i wouldn't highly recommend polling mechanisms in this scenario but technically you can do it that's all I have for you for this video. Very short, very concise. It's a very important topic, which I don't think we talk about enough because we only focus on APIs, but APIs is only part of the story. Special thanks to my GitHub sponsors for making these videos possible. If you want to support me as well, you're going to find the link in the description down below. Leave a like if you like this video, subscribe for more content like this, and ring the bell as well to get notified of new episodes. And I'll see you in the next video. Keep coding.